It may not have been our father that died, but there has been some relationships that we have been in that has died. There has been previous lifestyles that have died. There has been some seasons that the Lord has taken you through that has died. And now the Lord is wanting to do something different in our life. And so now today we're going to look at Abram to see some things that the Lord is calling for us to do. And so in verse 1 it says, The Lord has said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. So in order for us to handle delay, we have to listen for the voice of the Lord. Now Abraham, all, Abram, all this time he had been following his father. And his father died. And so we say, what next? And often in our life, when the Lord is doing things in our life, we go through certain seasons and we, we, we get comfortable with the season that we have been in. But when that season is dead, we stand around and say, what next? What am I supposed to do? We're no longer acting in that previous season that we were in because that season is over. So what we have to do is we have to listen for the voice of the Lord. The Lord was the one who spoke to Abram and gave him the direction that he needed to take. The, door, the Lord said to Abram, leave your country, your people, your father's household, and go to the land that I will show you. So the Lord gave him direction. But give the direction that he gave, he didn't tell him where they were going. He just said, I need you to go where I will show you. And so, see, in our lives, the Lord has given us a direction, but he hasn't given us the whole insight. And so when we don't see the whole insight, we become stuck and we may stay in that dead season or try to hold on to some of those things that died in the previous season. But what the Lord is saying to us is, I need you to follow me so that I can pull you out of the comfort zone, out of the place where you have been all of those years. You see, before he was under the hand of his father, but now he is under the hand of the Lord and the Lord is calling him to take lead. He's calling him to follow him out of that place. And when, we beca when we've come, become so comfortable in a place, it's hard for us to move. But what the Lord was telling him, he says, I am getting ready to lead you out of that comfort zone. A lot of us get scared yeah. when we're being pulled out of what we're comfortable with. Yes. When the Lord said that he was leading Abram, Abram was going to have to adjust to wherever it was that God was taking him to. Abram couldn't go to where the Lord was taking him to and still act like he was in earth. The Lord was taking him to a new place around new people doing new things. And if Abram would have got to that new place trying to do with the same things that he was doing in that dead season, that season that he didn't pass, it wouldn't have worked. So the Lord was saying, I am going to lead you to your destination. The destination that he was leading him to, it wasn't Abram's destination. It was God's destination. A lot of us have our destination and we want God to lead us to where we want to go. But the Lord said, I will lead you. I am taking you to where I want you to go. And so if we don't submit and if we don't listen to that voice of God, if we don't listen to the Lord is sending messages through so many different people and he continues to remind us what he wants us to do and remind us and remind us and remind us. But we are so stuck on our previous lifestyle and how we have done it for years that we're not going to be able to embrace the higher things that the Lord is calling for us to do. And so Abraham, after Abram, after he had been following his father, the Lord was calling him now to lead. It can be a scary thing to lead, but if you are under God's hand, if God is leading you and you are doing what the Lord is calling you to do, you're going to be fine. You have to listen for the voice of the Lord. We have to leave our past to embrace our future. Our future is not going to be what the Lord wants it to be if we keep trying to bring everything that he is trying to take away from us, that he has already taken away from us. If we try to bring that into where he is taking us to, we're still going to have that mindset of the past. And we can't embrace the new things, the great things of God that he is trying to do in our life because we're stuck in the past. But God is saying, I am pulling you, I am directing you, I am taking you to a new level. We are going to new heights in the Lord. But we have a choice to be obedient and do what the Lord has called for us to do. The Lord was calling Abram to do a great thing. All he had to do was agree or disagree. Now let me help you with the agreeing part. Because you can say okay and go 
and still be on, in disobedience because you disobedience because you're complaining about everything that you're going through or you're grumbling and mumbling with everybody from your past because you want to be back there doing what you were used to doing instead of embracing the new. Uh -huh. And so that's the same thing as not going. And so what the Lord is saying to us today is, will you follow my voice to where I'm leading you? Stop trying to be in control. Stop trying to tell me where you want to go and allow me to take you to where I want you to go. The destination that the Lord is taking us is not for us, but for him. And so when, we, when the Lord has given us a direction, we have to follow his voice. No matter who he sends the message through, we know when the Lord is talking to us. We can try to cover it up and say, no, it's not me, or if she say, or he say, one more thing that I know for sure, it's me. We know when the Lord is sending messages through us, whether it's through our kids, through a sign, through the word of God, whatever the case may be, we know. But the Lord is calling us to step out of that place that we've been so comfortable in because it's dead. Nothing is growing there for you anymore. It's time for you to move on. And so we ask, how do we handle delay? The first thing is we have to listen for the voice of the Lord. But look at verse 2. He says, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. So we have to listen for the voice of the Lord, but we also have to know that great things are coming. If we notice that Abram was still in that place, and the Lord was speaking to him of things to come. And so we may still be in that place that where the Lord, that place where we are, where that season has died, but the Lord is trying to take us there. And so if we don't believe that the greater is coming because the greater isn't here now, then it's going to keep us here. But we have to know that what the Lord is doing is going to happen in the future, depending on how you respond right now. And so if you don't adhere to the voice of the Lord and if you don't expect great things to come, then they're not going to come. The Lord said, I will bless you. I will make your name great. The Lord stands on his promises. If the Lord said it, it's going to happen. The only way that it won't happen is if you don't allow it to happen. The Lord is trying to do a great work through you. He says, I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. So it's not for you. It's not Your name is not going to be great for you. The Lord is not going to allow you to do this big, great thing for you to get the glory. The Lord is allowing you to do this great work for him to get the glory. The Lord wants us to be blessed so that we can bless others. And then when they become blessed, they will bless others. And so this is a trickling effect that the Lord is trying to do in his church. And so we have to understand that great things are coming. They may not be here now. You may not even feel like they come in. It may not even look like they come in. But if the Lord said it, it's going to happen. Amen. And so we handle the light when we listen for the voice of the Lord and when we expect great things to come. But look at verse 3. It says, I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So in order for us to handle delay, we have to listen for the voice of the Lord. We have to know that great things are coming. But we also have to know that the Lord have us covered. There's going to be some things that you need, and the Lord is going to open the door for you to get those things. But then there's going to be those haters that's going to hate on you, but the Lord got them covered too. And so we don't have to worry about the things that we need, or we don't have to worry about what people are saying about us, because the Lord has us covered in anything. And we can't everything, and we cannot expect for people to support us, and then when they don't support us, we lose habit. We have to stay focused on what the Lord has called for us to do. Everybody is not going to support you. Everybody is not going to support what you're doing. But you have to stay focused on the word of God. You have to follow what the Lord has called for you to do, no matter what it looks like, no matter how you feel. You are going to bless generations and generations. This is going to go through your children, your children's children, your children's children's children, but it all starts with you. You have a choice to make. I have a choice to make. We have a choice to make. Will we pass down the blessings to our children? Will we listen to what the Lord has called for us to do? Will we follow his direction? Will we believe the promises that he has spoken to us? We can't look at ourselves and say, I can't do the job. You can do the job because the Lord told you to do it. 
He knew all about you. He knew everything you did, everything you're doing, everything you're going to do when he told you that he has chosen you for the particular task. And so we have a duty to fall, follow his word. We have to fall through what the Lord is telling us to do. We have to get out of those habits. If we got, we got habits of partying when the Lord is calling you into the church, you need to stop partying and go to church. The Lord calling you from the usher board to the choir, you need to fall back from the usher board and go to the choir. Whatever your comfort zone is, do not get stuck there. Don't place God in a box and tell God what you want him to do in your life when he is trying to do something else. The Lord was leading Abram. Abram was not leading the Lord. And so when we get in those dead situations, when those seasons in our life die, when those relationships in our lives die, when those lifestyles die that we've been in, we have to make sure that we are listening for the voice of the Lord. We have to stay in line. And all seasons that die aren't bad seasons. It's just your time is up and it's time for you to take a step further. And so the question is, will you take that step further? And so God wants to do a great work through you, through me, through us. We are having a revival at a high school football stadium. Amen. Everybody will not see the vision. There's going to be some people, there are people that are blessing us, and there are going to be some people that are cursing us, will curse us, will hate on us, will do all types, but the Lord gave the vision. And so when we follow through and when we do what the Lord has called for us to do, generations will be blessed. Because our children will see that we had our revival at the football stadium at a high school. So then they'll want to take it to the Major League Baseball Stadium. And then it'll just continue to go and grow and grow. And next thing you know, it will be revivals everywhere. It doesn't have to be done in the building. Wherever the Lord is leading you to, Whatever the Lord is calling you to do, no matter how crazy it may sound, no matter what your past or present look like, do what the Lord is calling you to do. The ball is in our court. Will you do it? Will you do it or will you stand there in that dead season? Will you try to bring that dead stuff along with you? So my question to you is, will you allow the Lord to do what he is calling you to do? There's no longer a delay. The delay is on you. He has spoken to you. He has been speaking to you. Will you humble yourself? Will you go through your process? Will you allow him to take you where he wants you to go? Not where you want to go. Not where you feel like going. Not where you think you ought to go. Not where your mom and dad went or your grandma and them went, but where God wants you to go. We have to respond to the voice of God. We have to stop quickly responding to those other voices and respond to him. That thing, that thing that the Lord has spoken to you about, and you keep questioning it, is, is it really true? It's true. He's waiting on you. Now, if it's something that don't line up with the word of God, I'm not talking about you. Amen. I don't. All right. Uh -uh. But the Lord is calling us to do what he wants us to do. Our children are waiting for us to step up. Now you get tired of your kids doing the same thing over and over again. You get tired of the school calling or you get tired of them just not cleaning their room or you get tired of this and tired of that. I'm sure God gets tired of that too, but he's still waiting. You don't give up on your kid, he's not going to give up on us. That's right, amen. As you're waiting on your children to change, God is waiting on you to change. Sometimes our children aren't changing because we aren't changing. Amen. He says, all families on the earth will be blessed through you. In class yesterday, one of my classmates, Sister Green here, sorry, <laughs> one of my classmates said that, um, her, she got a family tree, and it was like her great, 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 great grandmother, they had been praying that the women in their family do ministry. And she said, when she finally got this tree, she couldn't believe it because she's in ministry, her aunt's in ministry, her daughter's in ministry, and that gave me hope that generations, I mean, my children's 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 children, I'm praying for all of them. We have to begin to change our lifestyles. 
Don't focus on how hard it's going to be or how good it doesn't feel or how uncomfortable it is. Or Don't focus on all of the negative. Focus on the positive. Focus on the promises God has made you. You individually and us collectively. Don't discount yourself. Don't say, I'm not talking to you. Don't think that God is not, is not including you in his plan. God has included all of us. The question is, will we follow through? Amen?